in to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV, over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yes, it is, and we just watched the season premiere of Dig on the USA Network, highly anticipated. Hi, I'm Mindy Thomas, so glad you're joining me here this evening. Uh, what a show, what a show. It just took us all around the world in an international cons conspiracy, and we're gonna get into uh, the recap and the storylines. For example, Peter and Emma, Josh the child, and Peter and Len, of course, their relationship. So we're going to dive in, but first, uh, let me just see how deep uh, we can get. I want you to tweet me at Mindy Charlotte, and let me know your thoughts, comments, and just interact with me so we can uh, get this party started the right way. Uh, you know, this is this is not a show necessarily that um, is everyone's just going to just be engaged with right away. Let me say why, because they're laying a foundation. However, everyone on the planet lives in some nation that it seems like that the show is going to take place in. Well, at least at least three. So uh, there's Norway. There's also the United States, and then there is Jerusalem, of course, the holy city in Israel. And whenever Jerusalem is brought into the picture, literally, there's going to be a lot of controversy. Uh, controversy in three particular ways, because you've got Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, and they all consider Jerusalem the holy city. So uh, we're seeing some, some different uh, religions uh, surface, and we're going to touch on that as well. Uh, and what are the, some of those look like? Uh, seem a little bit cultish. And uh, let's just say, if you are also an archaeologist, uh, then you definitely want to tweet me or a scientist because there's we're going to get into artifacts. Um, and I, I want to hear what your thoughts are because this is sort of like uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, you can't say that without the Ark of the Covenant. That's just a historical fact or hysterical, depending. But no, I'm totally in support of... Uh, this uh, program, this TV show, the way it's been shot and directed, there's just a lot of artistic ability. And there's so much foundation that has to be laid. So we are getting to know the characters, um, trying to get attached to them. I want to hear um, if you're if you're getting connected and if you plan to watch in the weeks ahead. So those are just some thoughts that I want you to interact with me on, on Twitter, again, at Mindy Charlotte. Now, of course, they start the show open with the Holy Scripture, and I did a lot of research on that. Um, but I want to talk first about uh, Peter Connolly, uh, played by Jason Isaacs. And, of course, many people are a fan of his because of why. The, you know, the hit, the hit movie, the Harry Potter films, of course, uh, that so many people have watched and been a fan of. So it's interesting to see him and Anne Hage, of course. Um, Anne Hage has an amazing, uh, unique bi biography that I've been researching. And so some of her background uh, in real life, I could see how she's really uh, a great person also to play a, this particular part with the different aspects of religion and the different tones uh, to the overall film. Of course, she is the FBI um, investigative person in charge, uh, the one, um, with the pants on, so to speak, although the show didn't start off like that and it was uh, a bit of a tricky situation for the two of them in that they do have a working relationship and also a friendship. Um, and it gets complicated because then we find out that Jason Isaac's character, Peter, Peter Connolly, well, he gets up and he's got this huge scar, you know, sort of like some shrapnel had hit him or something. There's some history there that uh, we got right into in terms of seeing that scar. And then we also noticed that, of course, his wedding ring was on his finger, although he's not married to Ann H's uh, character, Lynn Monahan. And uh, they're obviously over in Jerusalem for, for many months, um, and they're depicting this complicated relationship, friendship that crosses the boundaries, and 
Um, they're kind of using each other while they're over there, so to speak. And he's got a complex relationship with his wife. We saw the phone calls. Um, it, you know, it was um, just a very distraught situation. Now, uh, let's uh, jump into Peter and Emma because that is a great segue. He's distraught because um, there is certainly some grief recovery, if you will, happening or uh, that should be happening, so to speak, uh, because we don't, we don't understand why he begins to follow this girl, um, this beautiful girl, by the way. If you met this girl uh, and, you know, she's got this beautiful pink hair and, you know, there's a holy um, sort of crowd, it seems. And would you begin to follow her just anywhere? Because he was, you know, in other words, he had no inhibition. Uh, he was just following her wherever she was leading. And we found out later that there was more to that. Uh, how did you feel like that unfolded? I, um, I enjoyed that particular storyline tonight. I thought it was interesting. Of course, she's a beautiful young lady. And then having that tie in with the fact that she actually looked like the daughter, which was a bit sort of uh, creepy, if you will, just for, just from my opinion in terms of him jumping in the water with her because they were both nude. But of course, there was a reserved moment. And uh, the USA Network, by the way, a little bit racier than what I'm used to in terms of, you know, the... Uh, the old school uh, kind of networks that um, used to not show um, the buttocks and whatnot. So excuse me for that, but uh, no pun intended. Okay, so Peter um, and Emma, they are in this relationship and they're in this cave, uh, which really to me is fascinating because you get to go deep inside of these uh, archeological places and they seem so realistic. And she's talking about the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, which, Obviously, in um, the Bible, the Holy Bible, if you will, there's, uh, you know, there's a, a very intricate uh, way that you carry the Ark of the Covenant or you die. And we learned about a lot of that, of course, in Raiders of the Lost, Lost Ark to touch on that again. But um, the performances, I thought, were, were really wonderful. Um, it, it took a while for this to unfold for me. Obviously, it was a, it was a big premiere. Lots of incredible efforts gone into everything, traveling internationally, you know, getting um, the real locations and all of that added. But I've got to, I want to experience more. So I can't wait to, to watch next week. And there's only so much that we can see. But uh, certainly they uh, depicted that beautifully in terms of the, uh, the director of photography capturing a lot. And the director, um, who, let me just talk about him because, um, yeah, the creators of the show, well, Tim Kring and Gideon Raff, they've teamed up and I was watching interviews uh, regarding the show and um, yeah, I, I really get Heroes and Homeland and they've come together for this, um, this 10 episodes and it's very epic by proportion to take that on and create this uh, you know international conspiracy so the director S.J. Clarkson I really wanted to find out who is directing this because it I was I was totally impressed um, and you know there's a lot of uh, complexities I would imagine shooting uh, over in Jerusalem if it's safe or if it's not in Israel and just a lot of the uh, turmoil that can be happening there in, in real life as well. But I am I am thrilled um, that this was being shot and um, that we got to experience a lot of the real life on locations because, of course, that makes it all the more real and intriguing. Um, so there there is a certain pacing, a certain foundation that's being laid. And I would say for sure, if, if you're not sure if you're gonna watch again, watch again, because the season premiere, uh, sometimes it delivers too much. I feel like we're being drawn in and we're going to get to experience um, some of the unfolding of these characters in the weeks ahead. Um, so again, we're talking about uh, Peter Connolly having the wedding ring on. You know, we know he's a little bit uh, shady in his character, but then we find out, well, Emma, in fact, reminds him of his daughter um, that he lost. Um, and, uh, you know, that, I mean, that's just, uh, well, I, I think, I'm pretty sure they said the daughter, and you would have to correct me. If I'm wrong, then please tweet me, but I, there's so many different elements that, you know, you're, you're trying to get into, you're trying to stay 
uh, connected with everything that's happening and, and some really good action up and down the caves and in the stairwell. Um, and by the way, I'm not sure I would go up a stairwell by myself without any backup, um, particularly in another country, uh, even, in, even in America. But yeah, there's some good action that, that's going on. And, you know, all of this is surrounding this prophecy. And even in the show open, uh, let's talk about how, uh, you know, the, the calf, the red calf is coming out and the prophecy has begun, as they say. So let me just uh, touch on the scripture because I kind of had to look it up and, and find out why are they drawing from Numbers 19. And so it's Numbers 19 too in particular. And I'm just going to sneak back here and look at this. The scripture used, uh, again, Numbers 19, 2. So it's from the Torah, also known as the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And in the broader scope, uh, the Torah also includes all the Jewish law and tradition. So there's just a lot of rich uh, text and, and studying that can be done in these particular books. Um, and... The, the reference um, had to do actually with purifying yourself after you touch a corpse. So they have, um, uh, you know, introduced the program, uh, the show tonight with this particular scripture, and it's the cleansing of sin with this water with the heifer's ashes. But there's, there's, there's a lot more that's going on here. It definitely did remind me of the Da Vinci Code to an extent because it's it's got a lot of those tones, more of um uh yeah more of kind of an out there feel uh to it if you will because um there's some decoding that's going on and and they even have they even have the website um that you may want to take a look at uh called digdecoding.com i believe and uh there's some games and interaction that you can do as well so I was I was drawn in to find out what why are they using this particular cleansing and um, it's, it's all about a prophecy that's being revealed. And the Lord had said that, you know, in Numbers, that, that to Moses and Aaron, he said this is a type of cleansing, a requirement, or you must be cut off from Israel. So that's the whole thing is, um, you, you know, they don't want to be cut off from Israel. Obviously, this, this taking place in Israel. Um, and I'm not sure about the spiritual references entirely because we're seeing different religions unfold. Um, now let's uh, look at at Jason again. I'm going back to him and Emma. Um, excuse me, Peter. I said Jason because that's his real name, Jason Isaacs. And again, people uh, know him and love him from Harry Potter. He's also been in The Patriot, if you remember that movie with Mel Gibson. Um, yeah, I uh, I remember that, and so he's he's got this way of just just being able to play very intense parts and doing it quite well. So he reveals that he lost someone. So there's a lot going on um, in terms of he, he. It's sort of an uncontrollable grief, and is he hallucinating or not? That was some of what I was going through with he and Emma. I, I wasn't sure if she was really there. If this was like sort of like a ghostly, you know, experience, uh, or if she, or, or if she wasn't, because at the end of their, their conversation, um, he asks if he will see her again, and she says, if I don't see you first, well, then he uh, had later played the voicemail back from his daughter, it was the last one, apparently, that he had received, and, and so he's listening to her voice, and she says, if I don't see you first, so there's some kind of a great loss there, yes, and I am right about the daughter. I just um, am trying to process so many things here tonight and want to be completely accurate for you. So keep me on my toes um, at Mindy Charlotte and Twitter, and uh, let's do this together because I am excited to see the weeks unfold. Um, I think that it is going to be a very um, intricate, uh, you know, program in terms of. I, I liked I liked the, the discovering of the artifacts. So if if you like a little bit of history too, which right now there's a lot of historical things that are happening. Which um, anytime something is hysterical, I have learned that it can also be historical, and more than likely it is. So things that are happening in the world today, even you know, on the news and and everything, um, a lot of times it leads back to the history of different um, different wars and, and religions and, and controversies thereof. So 
I am um, really glad to see this program to see how are they entertaining people and how can they um, draw you know people in. Of course, the murder mystery goes back to uh, that th th this show is based on. Let me just quote the New York Times. They said, "As Dig is a murder investigation that takes an apocalyptic turn." So that was uh, one of the titles, and I really like that. Uh, so there's there is a, a very broad scope. It's international. It's apocalyptic. You go back two thousand years, of course, in Christianity, uh, two thousand years ago, and of course in America, you know, the, the country's founded on A.D. and B.C. BC so. Um, you've got before Christ and you've got after death. And so a lot of that's based on the faith of Christianity that of course can't be denied and everything, but, um, <clears throat> but, I, but it's, it's a pure thing and it's a loving thing. And, um, and also, uh, you know, with the justice and everything. So I think there's a lot of parallels, um, that obviously with Judaism and Christianity for sure. And I'm interested to see if they're going to pull from any more scriptures and use uh, use that to to describe things. And of course, in the Da Vinci Code, that was that was way you know it was it's pulling from things in a different context. And I think it's important to uh, you know if you're actually studying it in real life, look at it from an unadulterated perspective. Entertainment's one thing, and that's what we're talking about here tonight. But but certainly if you're looking at it at home and, and you want the, you know, a pure uh, perspective, then, um, then that is also uh, available. But um, he reveals, you know, he lost someone and to, uh, to Emma and she had slipped something in his pocket um, also. And so um, unfortunately the next day he sees these photos of her and she, she, I mean, there are photos of her. She's been murdered. So my thought was, did she see something in that sacrifice? Did she did she see something she shouldn't have seen because they were in the cave? And he goes back to that cave um, and investigates. And then he sees the brick wall. Uh, that was kind of revealing, like, yeah, let's just put a wall up and act like nothing happened. So... Uh, that was very, very interesting, which is a lot of times what can happen um, in the mix of a lot of the mystery um, with things that are done in underground religion and that sort of thing. So um, let's see if he asks. Yeah. Against the wishes of his boss, he you know, he's actually doing the investigation because she said grief can be complicated and she's trying to be his friend. He's like, oh, so you know everything about the way my mind is working right now. And he chooses not to listen to his boss, um, Len Monahan. He goes ahead and works, you know, with um, he, he works. Uh, uh, with the Israeli detective who is doing a great job as well and you know at the beginning of the show they were also chasing after that same suspect and and this is kind of all interwoven because um, you know now he's he's met this girl he had feelings for her he's got this daughter attachment to the case and so it's making things even more complex because it's his grief is becoming more uncontrollable uh, so that was, yeah, that was interesting the way, you know, we're drawn in and, um, and, and I can just imagine the tremendous effort that all of the cast and crew went into to actually get this made, uh, because you, you can tell that, that this is really a high quality project and, and that's, uh, that's why I'm thankful to be watching it, but also the drama. And uh, it's not just, um, I, I also like it, it's not doing cheap action, you know, if you will. It's, um, it's drawing us into um, uh, a deeper place, um, trying to draw us into and attach us to. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be interested how much I'm going to be um, dug into, be able to dig into <laughs> this particular story plot. Um, well, the three and moving on, let's let's talk about Josh because Josh is another one of the storylines that uh, that that was very. I like the way it was shot. It kind of had a blue feel, if you will, and sort of a cultish atmosphere for sure. Uh, kind of like David Koresh, if you remember him back from Waco, Texas, uh, back in the day when he had the compound and. I think, I th well, I think uh, maybe eighty to hundred people died in that. Uh, cult following of him and 
that was the let's see david koresh yeah the davidian branch that's what it was it kind of, so it totally reminded me of something like this uh, the mother has got more of a nurturing a, a pure sort of loving way and then the uh the the leader of the cult if you will is is telling josh the evil word at 13 that okay your parents are dead he thinks they're gonna come back and he drops this bomb on him totally traumatizes him and basically his whole life has been a lie up to this point so <clears throat> the mother um the mother type and and the man say all of uh you know these teachings that they've been doing it's all a part of his destiny and that was just a little bit uh you know far out you know for me and but he thinks he hears somebody else in the compound if you will seems like just not that many of them live there and what's really bizarre is that you know he's not supposed to go play in the grass he's not supposed to go play outside um, now that's going to the nth degree but i guess they were trying to keep him um uncontaminated if you will not content you know um and kind of to where his feet were not supposed to touch the ground we found out later uh, and that was a really nasty cold-blooded situation when the other little boy we found out was in fact living there looked just like josh his twin of some kind and then uh the other one was uh yeah had the the cold-blooded situation the woman basically had to end his life because his feet had to touch the ground well thank god that you know that's not the case with uh apparently the other child I, oh well we don't really know yeah because they are keeping him inside so um it's a little bizarre he's supposed to be some type of a uh maybe a sacrifice as well because uh why else would they have to keep him inside away from the elements um so that was uh, a unique twist and then oh goodness there was just a lot going on tonight so peter and well before i get to peter and, and lynn um let me just say that um josh and the child tell me if you were into that if you were into some people um you know are a part of a cult and they want to break away from it or they see perceive that as as normal i don't personally perceive that as normal but um but it was definitely entertaining the way it was shot and everything that's for sure um so peter and lynn we've got to dive back into their relationship because they have um yeah it's it's not um it's not a very you know it's not the lovey-dovey it's that you know they're way in a different realm and he's got the the wife back home that that they did have a couple of phone calls together and uh, you can tell in their heart of hearts there's definitely some love there a lot of love lost but um, is it only from grief is it uh, is it because they don't he's not really a real uh, loving man toward her can't keep his commitment we don't really know um, why they are on the rocks except for the you know the horrible loss that they had experienced together uh, the relationship between Peter and Lynn so she says look you're a real friend to me and she ends up taking him off that case after all um, which is the only thing to do because she's looking out for him but there then he's he's in the car he's driving away with the uh, suspect in the back and a breastplate was found to help um, a high priest communicate with God apparently and they are um kind of and so, so so this detective is looking out for him after all he's like you need to come back here well then there's the car ends up in a wreck after the guy was sort of pr praying or something i guess calling on this breastplate um and so so he disregarded the warning then he was in that bad car crash and he began to chase them um and then it comes out that really the guy said empty your pockets and he ended up just taking off he didn't shoot him in the back like he could have but he took the uh the jewel that was in his pocket that emma had put there so this is going to be um some 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 of the storyline is going to tie into the artifacts and the significance because it has to do with prophecy and in a lot of the um uh you know older type um 
uh, historical types of religions. Um, there was more artifacts in, um, in current day. I don't, you know, if you think there's a lot of artifacts in current day religion, I'd like to know about that. Uh, because I'm not really exposed to that in particularly either. So if, and, and how that plays out in this show. Uh, so let me know how you think that plays out and dig and tweet me about that. But yeah, um, I, I think that in essence, they're pulling from scripture, they're pulling from artifacts. And in terms of predictions, you know, I just think that uh, the wife is probably going to end up being a part of the investigation in some way. Um, because remember, they're trying to solve a murder mystery um, that happened over there. Um, and it's, it's all leading to something else from like 2000 years ago. So, so we've gotten a lot of clues tonight and I encourage you to go on the website, digdecoded.com, just check it out, see if you like it. There's some games and interactive uh, uh, whatnot, if you will. And uh, let me know how you like that as well. Um, again, I enjoyed the performances very much, um, the creative storytelling and um, I'm interested to see where it's all going to go. I think uh, we're going to learn more about the cultish thing. And uh, feel free to listen to us on iTunes. And, and I'll see you next week as well. I'm Mindy Thomas, and you're listening and watching After Buzz. I hope you have a great rest of the night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.